second half, and those threes were a lot of them were wide open. We were late on our rotations. Uh, we were late in transition, and they stepped up. The young fellow Vessel came in and made some big shots, and Patty came in that second half. He had like 16, 17, and uh, Lamarcus did the same thing. He he didn't have much in the first half, two or three points, and he came back and had 15 in the second half. But Gave up too many threes. Um, played hard though. Our guys played hard. We competed. Um, our bench, our bench came in and and, and competed. And you know, we didn't we didn't play particularly well, uh, but we played hard. And that's all I can ask for right now. Are the rotation aspects that you're talking about? Is that just because it's a new group of guys, long layoff, things like that? Well, I mean that's that's part of it. I think our we ran out of gas a little bit. Now, that's not an excuse. It's just reality right now. And you know, I, I knew going into the game the minutes were going to be uh, pretty hard to try to keep it guys' legs fresh. I thought we did a good job with Brad um, with his minutes. Um, he he got tired a little bit in that first half as well. But like I said, our guys competed. We played. We played hard. We didn't. We didn't make shots in that first half. I thought our, our I thought our offense was really. We got some of our best looks all year in that first half. But we we I thought we had a, a good enough. A ball movement, body movement to have about 70 points in that first half. We just could not make a wide open three. Chase. Scott, what did you see from Russ tonight? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to play better. Uh, he's going to have to, we're going to have to go through that with him. He's going to get in a rhythm. It's going to take him some time. Uh, but I, I like the fact that he went out there and competed. He wants to play. He wants to help our team win. Uh, he feels he's always been that way. He's, he feels very, he's prideful and he feels this is his job and, you know, he's going to play better. He didn't play well. Uh, he's, I'm glad that he got out there. A lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys that in his position don't want to put himself out there that, that he's probably not, you know, he's, he's, he's healthy, but he's not a hundred percent. Basketball wise, it's, he hasn't played in a while, but I, I, he's going to get better. He's going to play better, and we're going to play better. And your first impressions of Alex Len? I like him. I like him. I, I knew, I knew what he would bring. You know, he brings the, his length, his uh, verticality at the rim. You gotta, you gotta bring your good stuff to make a shot over him. He's not going to give up anything. He's not going to give up anything easy. As, as soon as he understands what we're doing, both ends. He's going to even be better, but I, I think he was pretty good. His conditioning, you know, is 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 a is a step back, and he's going to that's going to improve day to day. And but I, I like what he brings. Um, he's going to help us. Um, that was a that was a really good pickup. Fred, hey Scott, um, can can you further explain the distinction between what it is to be healthy versus not one hundred percent basketball wise? Yeah, I mean healthy. Is just obviously when you're, you're healthy, that's pretty self-explanatory. Basketball, if you haven't played in a while, it takes a while. It's not, you can't just turn the switch on and and your team or individual players can't just turn it on. Uh, been around the league a long time. You need you need some rhythm. And Russell, all of our guys, I thought we, we were out of sync in that second half. Even in the first half, we were out of sync uh, offensively. We were getting good looks. Maybe we didn't, we didn't we didn't knock them down, but I think with what we've gone through, I like the way our guys competed. Um, we got another day to, to regroup, and we got two more cracks on this road trip. And Houston's obviously the next step. Um, but I think all of our guys, not just Russell. Um, all of our guys are going to have to get back in a, in a, in an NBA rhythm. We, it's been totally taken away from us. We have a game, we have a flight, we're in a hotel, we're at a practice. Those are our normal routines of an NBA season. And we didn't really do anything for, for two weeks other than practice the last two or three days. Ava. Hey, Scott, um, it didn't quite show up with a crazy stat line, but Robin looked really effective under the basket, especially in the first half. What did you see from him that he was able to kind of take advantage of? He has um, good, he has great footwork. He has good hands. He's very deliberate and patient on his moves, and he's big. He's a wide, uh, he's a wide body, a, a, a good target to throw to. He has good hands, and he finishes around the rim. 
I think we're going to have both of those guys who are going to be pretty good for us because they both have a pretty good skill set around the basket. And they both do a pretty good job of verticality defensively. And they're pretty good blocking out and bo boxing out as well. Um, and sometimes they don't get to rebound, but their man does not. But I, I, Robin's footwork and uh, he's very, I mean, it, sometimes it looks like he's um, going to get three seconds in the key, but he's, his timing is impeccable and his, his footwork is really good. And now that you kind of have a baseline of, of where the guys are at, how do you go about ramping up expectations? Obviously, like you said, you guys are still on the road. It's still kind of all weird and new right now, but what are you telling the guys? Okay, this is what we need to now build on heading into next game. Well, the, the effort was good. We got to play better. There's no question. We, we got the first game under our belt. Uh, we got some new guys integrated. Uh, we got our, this is our new team right now until our other guys come back. Those are, those are obviously really good players and important players that are out. But in the meantime, guys are going to have to step up and, 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 and um, keep competing. I thought, like I said, the effort was great. Uh, we did we didn't, we didn't lose this game because we didn't, we didn't, our give a heck uh, level was low. We, we cared and we played, we played hard and we didn't play well. Um, we didn't play well. None of us um, played, even Brad and Brad had a, had a really, had a good game, but I, I, he could have played better. Obviously Russell could have played better but down the line. Uh, Jerome missed a, a lot of open shots. Bonga missed a couple of easy bunnies. Uh, we made a couple of mistakes on the, on the defense. We had a foul to give. Uh, and we found the three-point shooter, four-point play, but all those things are correctable, and we're gonna we're gonna get better as this road trip goes on. We gotta we gotta obviously come back, and we got two or three and four nights. So tomorrow is gonna be just an optional practice. With our optional practice, everybody kind of goes in and shoots just because you want to get out of a hotel room, and so it's another day for us to get better. All right, we'll take a couple more, Joe. Hey, Scott. Um... This almost sounds like a normal post-game press conference. And uh, I mean, you don't have anybody who's played professional basketball in the last two weeks. And you were handing out your offense on video playbooks. And, you know, the Spurs haven't missed a beat. Like, wasn't it, isn't it remarkable that this game was close in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I mean, that's, this whole, this whole season for us has been weird. It's definitely as a, I don't think I will go in through anything like this ever again. Uh, it all happened like all after is one one game after another. You know the the, the main thing that we we I don't forget about it because I get to still see him when we're at the practice site is Thomas Bryant. Uh, he's out all year, uh, and then everybody else has been out after that. But we can't keep we can't keep dwelling on it uh it's behind us now i'm just glad we're playing we got to get that first game in and we did that tonight with great effort i wish we would have played better i wish we would have made some of those open threes in the first half that probably would have gave us some more confidence going into the second half um but i'm glad we got the game in uh it's, like i said it's unique but it's behind us and we're going to start getting guys back um a couple of guys are, are starting to, to work out without saying names. Uh, so they, they're, they're onto their next step and probably not going to come on this road trip, but they're going to be back soon. Maria. Um, hi coach. Nice to see you again. And nice to see your team back as well. What do you think are the keys that you'd like to continue seeing from your team on and off the court in regards to their development, especially under these circumstances? Yeah, just keep uh, our leaders keep leading and our players keep giving good effort, good work. Uh, we got great guys off the court. You know, I, we're champions, uh, everybody of our organization that believes in community. So off the court's easy. I don't even have to worry about any of our guys. They do the right things. But on the court, we're gonna keep getting better. We're gonna keep developing. You know, we have a young front line when we're healthy and, and, and whole and and COVID will be behind us soon. Uh, so, but I have, like I said, I have no, no complaints tonight other than, you know, we don't, you don't want to go into a game and lose. Uh, so that hurts. It's going to be a, a lot of, uh, it's going to be a late night for our coaches, the film. But I, 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 like I said, our guys competed. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them because we've gone through a lot. 
uh, sometimes I sometimes I don't look at them as uh, you know they, they, just, they, they go through a lot and they've been through a lot and they handled it and, and we came out pretty good. Uh, now we've got to just keep playing better and for efforts like we did tonight and we play a little bit better. I like our chances in our next game. Last question from Fred. Hey Scott, uh, I know I know it has nothing to do with tonight's game, but uh, on Tuesday you guys are going up against John Wall. Have you thought about how strange that might be after you coached him for so long and after he was a wizard for so long? How strange that might be looking up and seeing him on the other sideline? It's no question. It's going to be uh, strange for you know myself and especially Brad. I, mean, I have a lot of respect for John. I've seen him come back through all of his injuries. Really, I've, I've coached him for four years, but I really only coached him for one. He was down for all three years, and then he missed the last two. Uh, but I, I, I'm proud of him that he came back the way he came back. And a lot of guys, you know, he, he was banged up, but he played last game. So a lot of guys, you know, he, he has a – He's had a great career already, and he's had some tough luck with his injuries. And a lot of guys could have just, you know, shut it down. It just wasn't meant for him. This happened many times with other players in the league. But he's fought and he's fought and he's fought. And he's come back and looking forward to seeing him, just like a lot of our guys and our coaches are as well. We got a lot of respect for him. Did a lot for our community, and you know he's gonna he's gonna come back and and, and play well for Houston. Hey, Alex, uh, just your first impressions of playing with the Wizards tonight. What do you think? It was good. I was just trying to, you know, trying to fit in with the guys, uh, trying to get a feel for the game, how to, how, to, how to play with the guys and pick up on the schemes and, uh, and offensive sets and stuff like that. Was there anything in particular that stood out to you that um, surprised you or that you'll have to adjust going into the next game? I mean, not really. This is my eighth year in the league, so I mean, I'm pretty much seeing everything. I'm just... It's going to be a matter of time as fast as I can pick it up, you know, the defensive schemes and how to play with the guys, how to, where everybody like to go. You know, I know Bill, uh, <clears throat> Brandon like to come off uh, pick and roll. I mean, not pick and roll, the, uh, you know, side picks for, for a shot. Ross like to get down a hill and, you know, just, just, you know, just got to learn how to play with the guys and make the best out of it. Neil. Hey, Alex. Uh, you know, Scott told us about, you know, they're giving you guys these video playbooks, things to try and help you get, you know, adjusted in the sh short term. Right now, you had whatever, one, two days. What's the next evolution of trying to get back up to speed with the rest of the guys? What is that going to look like? You know, like, like you said, just, you know, starting the, starting the playbook, uh, talking with the coaches, you know, trying to ask questions, ask, ask, ask guys on the court. You know, I always talk to Cash or, or Russ asking them where, where to go and stuff like that. But I mean, it, it's a, it's going to take probably a couple of games, but we got an easy place, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much ready up to, up to speed. Hey, Brad, um, just how do you think you guys played uh, given the circumstances? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I feel like we competed. We got off to a slow start, uh, but you know, I feel like we competed. You know, we we got up early and held on to the lead. I think the third quarter kind of hurt us a little bit. Late in the second, hurt us, um, but you know, we did a we did a good job of just competing where we had. As they kind of erupted there in the third quarter, um, was it as simple as you guys just kind of feeling the, the the effects of not playing for two weeks? I mean, we could say that, you know, uh, we haven't we haven't played in a long time. So it was kind of, I knew that's why I was asked in the first half, just trying to get, get my rhythm back, get the flow back. Um, but, you know, it's no excuse. This is what we do, it's our job, so. Granted, the circumstances, you know, has never been seen in NBA history uh, with us kind of going on a hiatus for two weeks. But, um, you know, we got to, you know, we got to just, we got to, we got to go out and compete. You know, we got to go out and play. We gave ourselves a few extra days of practice to get, get going. But, you know, tonight was good for us. Uh, it was good to get our win back, but just came up short. Ava. Brad, how, I guess, what's your outlook on the rest of the season, considering, you know, you guys are going to be rolling with the players you have for a while and then integrating other people, like, how can you kind of proceed and how do you adjust your expectations given all of the weirdness going on? Or do you, do you, ignore, do you have to ignore it? Uh, 
I don't really know. Uh, it's always next man up. You take it for what it is. The season, the whole season in its entirety is just weird. You know, it's it's not normal. Um, like I just got done getting tested after the game. Like that's not normal. So it's just everything is just weird. You know. So um, granted, we got a lot of guys out right now. A couple guys hurt. Um, so you know, we're 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 kind of doing a lot of things on the fly, but you know. It, just grants opportunities for more guys. You know, it's always next man up mentality in this league. You know, we always know that. Once one guy goes down, it grants, you know, other guys opportunities to come in and showcase what they can do. And when you guys got off to the Rocky start at the beginning of the season, you always described the locker room as still being really positive and good. What is it like now? And I guess, how much are you shouldering the burden of keeping guys lifted right now as well? Well, it's my job as a leader to always keep guys um, uplifted and encouraged and confident. Um, so in a lot of ways, you know, that's, you know, nobody's, like I said before, we don't have any camaraderie problems, any character problems, or we're more or less pissed off at ourselves and how we're playing, you know? Uh, so it's not like we're giving in, we're giving up, you know, it's just, it's a frustration. It's an individual frustration and a team frustration. So we got to, we all look ourselves in the mirror and we all just got to be better. We all just got to rile up together, understand that, you know, the odds are against us, but, you know, we still have, we still have enough to win. Maria. Hi, Brad. Looking at the bright side, what did you like the most from how your teammates were playing today? And what is something that you enjoy from your game? Oh, uh, well, I enjoy every second of basketball. So, you know, whenever I'm on the floor, I'm always just, I'm excited to be out there. It's a blessing to be on the floor. You know, we sometimes we take it for granted, but it's it's a blessing to be out there each and every night. And so, you know, I always approach it as, you know, just as that, and you know, I'm gonna play extremely hard and have fun doing it, you know? Uh, and, you know, I was happy with how we competed. You know, we, we are shorthanded, you know, everybody knows that. Um, we added two guys on the fly. We just signed them two days ago and, you know, they did a good job coming in, giving us energy, Alex and, and JB. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be some adversity. It's going to be a little work in progress, but you know, this is, I'm used to it, you know, and I'm always putting things on my shoulder to kind of, you know, carry it throughout the year and put burgers on my shoulder. So, uh, this, this is no different. You know, I always expect more of myself. I got to be better. Stop turning the ball over. Make more shots. Just be better. Chase. Brad, your guys' next game is, I'm sure, one you, you noticed on the schedule when it first came out. You'll be facing John for the first time. Um, as it gets closer, what do you kind of anticipate from that matchup? What matchup? With the Rockets and uh, John Wall? Um, I'm sure we're going to expect the energetic John Wall. I mean, I think we all know that. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know really what you want me to say. I've never played against John before, so this is this is all new to me. Uh, but, you know, he, he's going to be energetic. We're not just playing John, we're playing the Rockets. Um, you know, but we, we do have that in the back of our mind that he's going to be in attack mode um, and aggressive. And uh, like I said, we're playing Houston. So, you know, he's not the only guy we got to worry about. Boogie had a good, great, great game last game. Christian Woods playing great as anybody in the league right now. Um, Eric Gordon has always been one of my favorite players watching and his skill work. So, you know, they have pieces. Um, they just added Victor Olivo too. So, you know, we it won't be easy at all, you know, it'll be, it'll be a good punch for us and we got to really bear down and be ready to go. All right, we'll finish up with Matt Paris. Hey Brad, following up on that, do, do you find yourself paying more attention to the Rockets now that John is there? Like, do you watch them more on League Pass than you used to or anything like that? <laughs> I don't really watch basketball like that, honestly. Uh, unless it's a team we're about to play. Uh, I always keep up with John, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm watching him every night. Uh, but I do, 
I do keep up with them. I do stay in contact with them. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you know I'm spending every night worrying about John. So I'm sure he doesn't do that with me. So. Hi, Russ. Uh, just curious, after that game, where you're at now with the quad and just how you're feeling after playing for the first time, and, and I think it's over two weeks now. Yeah, I mean, I'm all right. Chase. Russ, how, how do you think you guys played, given the circumstances? Um, I thought we did a good job in the first half. Um, second half, not so much. Ava. Hey, Russ. Um, just wondering for you, as, as someone who obviously always wants to be out on the court, how do you within yourself decide, like, OK, I know maybe if I'm not 100% basketball wise, but I want to be out and I have to get out at some point. How, how does that decision happen in your mind? I mean, I, I know you've done it a million times before in your career. Uh, you got to figure it out right now. I'm, I'm playing a minute restriction, so I only can play a certain amount of minutes. Different time, got to get in the rhythm, but uh, I just got to be better. Simple as that. I ain't really too many excuses. I don't really like to make excuses. So, Rachel Nichols. Hey, Russ. Welcome back. Um, just wanted to do a project about Kobe Bryant and wanted to get your memories of the first time you ever played Kobe, I don't know if it was your rookie year, but what do you remember from the very first time you were on the court with him? Um, <clears throat> just his attention to detail, his intensity. Um, I've already been watching Kobe since I was growing up and obviously um, one of my favorite players uh, being in LA. So um, just watching him and then being on the court for me, it was a, um, just a, a blessing in, in itself because a kid like myself, uh, growing up in LA, being able to be on the same court as Kobe Bryant, um, you know, for me, um, it was just an unbelievable um, experience and blessing. And the first time I, I just paid attention to his intensity, his attention to detail, um, how locked into the game um, he was, and um, I try to implement that in, in my own game. Do you remember anything you said to him or he said to you or any moves between the two of you back and forth? Oh, no, it was no talking. <laughs> uh, that's what separated Kobe from others. It wasn't no talking back and forth about anything. You you, you are out there to be able to compete. Um, and I'm the same way um, as, a, as a, you step on the floor, uh, it's time to compete and uh, get the best. I think that's the way uh, we communicated by going at each other, um, not even my rookie year, but as my career prolonged. and. Kobe's as well. Uh, that's the way I think we communicated more often and just competing and going, uh, you know, at each other um, and, and trying to make sure our team was winning the game. Thanks, Russ. Maria. Hi, Russ. What was it about coming back to the games that most excited and motivated you? Um, just trying to find my way back, you know. Um, it's been a long time off, but um, just trying to get some rhythm. All right, last question from Joe. Hey, Russ, I realized just a couple minutes ago, you said you, you don't want to make any more excuses, but when literally no one on your team has played competitive basketball in two weeks, what could you reasonably have expected out of tonight? Uh, I can't. I'm talking about for myself. Um, you know, I'm... I just think differently, bro. I mean, you know, some people think, um, you know, that's just how I think. So I don't make excuses. You step on the floor, you got to be able to be ready to go. And I'm definitely not where I need to be on all aspects. So I just got to be better and get my shit together. So 